All right, we're doing it again because I failed the whole three cycle thing last time and that's unacceptable and it's not even hard. So we're doing this again, skipping the Deku cycle because nobody cares. I'm five rupees away from the adult's wallet. So it's all standard stuff. And to be honest, I'm kind of in a, a little bit of a mood. <laughs> no, but uh, I actually attempted this. I fully completed cycle one, got the all nights mask. That's the focus this time. That's the only way to do this. And I pulled it off and then I, uh, Song of Soaring to the Mountain Village Owl and the game Softlock. The music was playing and the screen was black and obviously you can't save in this game and I wasn't using save states so I lost all of that and I was a little bit pissed. But it's okay because we got five rupees and we're getting the adult's wallet and we're gonna do it this time. No nonsense. I'm sick of failing. It's unacceptable. I do love this game though, it's significantly better than Breath of the Wild. I don't know. Which, that kinda, that's something to talk about. If this guy would stop spinning in front of the bank or he doesn't care about your dance moves, just freaking deposit. Oh, everything's going way of the pair already. That's not even the phrase. This is a bunch of shit. <laughs> Give me my wallet, please. All right, what are we doing here? We're we're getting the 100 rupees in the bomber's notebook, and we're booking it to Woodfall. Which, by the way, during the Deku cycle, I was goofing around in my grind for rupees, and I actually went to Southern Swamp. Oh yeah, in one of my attempts to re-record this, I I went to Southern Swamp and forgot to hit this statue, and I realized it midway through the stupid red potion stuff, and I could have punched somebody right then and there too it's just that constant frustration it's a weird perfectionist thing where i know i can't even be speedrun quality with this game but i still want to get it as perfect as possible in the way that i typically play if that makes any sense i don't know it's stupid i, I got a lot i could say on that too we've got a plethora of commentary to talk about this time Actually, not really, but sort of. There was something I was about to talk to and I lost it already because I went all retarded. We're doing the backpedal in this time too. Somebody mentioned it. I mean, I knew about it already. That backpedaling is the faster way of moving, especially as Deku Link. But the code is the same. It's still the same file. I forget how that works. I think it's file one and file two of a particular cartridge. It's always the same code or something like that. I don't know. I forget how that works. But I'm doing this to get the Bomber's Notebook faster, just like last time, if you watched that four cycle series failure. That's a complete joke. I'm ashamed that that's even there. It's just like permanently there now to be like, yeah, this guy sucks. Yeah, shut up, Jim. Just go run away. No, don't shut up, Jim. I like Jim. The Bombers are cool. I also like Ivan and the guys from Wind Waker. If you go watch my Wind Waker LP part two, I gave those guys like mafia voices. I don't know, that whole let's play is a little bit cringy though. Cause it's the one time I actually like tried to read the dialogue and put in voices and yeah. In retrospect, I wish I hadn't. Anyway, to Woodfall, just like last time. Alright. We are going to hit the statue, get the red potion, and I'm going to cut all that out. Oh yeah, I picked up nuts and sticks already too during the Deku Cycle since I came over this way. But yeah, whatever, I'll see you at the palace, I guess. boat ride. I'm not even looking at the moon. Not that lag matters. I don't even think that really applies with emulators, does it? I don't know. I don't understand all this technical specifications. Arriving at Deku Palace. Get ready to dance. The Theophany remix of Deku Palace is pretty nuts. I like it. I approve. Don't get caught this time. 
I know there not to just press A because otherwise you do a spin dance. You have to press Z and A simultaneously in order to speak to him that quick. Alright, I'm going slow and easy because in one of my attempts, this is like my fourth attempt of re-recording this whole three cycle thing. Once again, I could... I'm not even gonna... I don't even know. I have nothing. I got really pissed off. Let's just say that. But, uh, yeah. I got a little bit too hasty here and got caught, and then I threw... Well, I, I turned the game off, and I threw a tantrum. I didn't throw a tantrum, but I was pissed off. Okay, we're alright. Didn't get caught. So far, so good. We could definitely get to the bow before 1 p.m. this time, too. I mean, the last time I was like, oh yeah, every time I play, it's like 1 p.m. It's like, yeah, if you suck at the game, it's 1 p.m. Don't look at the bean. Yeah, it's soil. Oh my gosh. I wonder what you put there in that little dirty hole. What? Uh... All right, get out of my face. Bean, ocarina. Get caught. So yeah. Since I didn't really go into detail about it, the only way to optimally free cycle this thing glitchless using only the Goron Bomb Jump is the only glitch we're using if it's even considered a glitch, which I submit that it is not. But I know my opinion is usually not what the majority thinks. Like in the topic of Star Fox, that's what I wanted to talk about it before, but not yet. Let me finish what I'm saying here. Mask, bean, bean, don't show it to the world. What is this? I wonder. Hmm. Pressing down, see, like a madman. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, so we're getting the bow, getting the heck out of here, going to Snowhead, getting the fire arrows. First, we need to get the Goron's Mask and Goron's Lullaby, obviously, to get to fire arrows because we need it for the Ocean Spider House. That's the optimal goal. Ocean Spider House also requires the hook shots. So we're doing this, getting to the bow, Goron Mask, Goron's Lullaby, fire arrows, Zora Mask. Hookshot plus one egg, Ocean Spider House before night one is over. Before we have to go meet and save the bomb shop lady too at 11.30, technically midnight, but I think you gotta be there early. And it's really not that hard. It is tight, but it's not very difficult at all, actually. Ah, you missed. Everything you do is just awful, isn't it? It's all right, you don't need to actually kill these guys. I don't- I got into a weird habit recently of doing that, and I never used to as a kid. Gotta go back to the kid strats where you just get in and go. It's kind of like the- it's how you go swimming, right? Swimming pools and oceans are usually freezing cold. It's always gonna be a shock on your body, but the more you linger and like put in a toe first, you know, and try to get used to it. I just need a minute, honey. It's just no good. You just gotta jump in there and take all the shock at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Pick the right option. Yes, did it. Okay. Somebody said there's a way to get into this cage way easier than even doing bombs who hovers out there. I'm curious what they were talking about because if you even take off the Deku mask in here. they throw you out. So what, the only thing I could think is like a Deku Gainer, but I don't even know where you would do that or what you would grab onto. It doesn't matter anyway. Okay, here, this is another prime example. Don't even shoot bubbles at the things. Just go. Please don't send me into a spiraling rage. Don't do it. Don't do it with your buzzing. All right, get over here. What? I waited. There we go, now one more. This is a waste of time too, but this is how I did it as a, as a kid. I think it might still be faster than hoping that your bubble hits, but who knows. Alright, so in the approach to Woodfall, I guess I could go on my Star Fox thing I wanted to talk about. Starlink Battle for Atlas, all the reviews just came out for it, and... It's bothering me that the majority of the comments I see about it are like, Oh yeah, this is like the Star Fox, Star Fox that never was. Take notes, Nintendo, and all this stuff. 
And I'm probably one of the few people who has actually enjoyed most of the Star Fox series, even the more recent games. Like, Star Fox Zero is not a bad game. It's not as good as Star Fox 64, but it's not due to the controls. I think it's because there's only 12 diverse full-length levels compared to Star Fox 64's 16. Total, there's 20 levels in that game. But eight of them are garbage bonus missions that aren't even long at all, and they're bad most of the time. So that's that game's disappointment. And yeah, I understand they gotta stop rebooting the origin story for Star Fox. But Starlink Battle for Atlas, it's No Man's Sky. Like, the combat looks terrible in that game. And just the life bars and stuff, I don't know, nothing looks satisfying about shooting enemies and strafing like a little hovering tank on ground level. Like, give me a Landmaster and let me roll around and go nuts with that. If you're gonna do that. Like, I, I don't know. And even just the dogfighting in space didn't look appealing. And then it's got the whole toys to life thing too, which I know is optional, but... I don't know, people are pushing like they want Star Fox to be forever changed and go that direction. And if they do that, I'm gonna hate the Star Fox series. And I really don't want that to happen. Like, I understand it needs a little bit of help, it needs to do more than just reboot Star Fox 64 every time. But if you look at all the recent Star Fox games, and I promise I'm almost done with this rant, <laughs> we can get back to Zelda, but... I don't know, they had really good ideas, they just... They always cover it with a technology gimmick, too, and... The public seems to hate that, and yeah, it doesn't always work. Like, the touchpad on the DS for Command was kind of... I don't know. It wasn't terrible, it just wasn't ideal in terms of piloting the thing, but it was awesome for the strategy element. Assault did a good job of trying to push this series ahead, I think. Adventures, I mean... It was good at the time, but... And it's a good adventure game, it's just not really... It could have been better. I don't know. Ah, I got the slow one, man. I didn't spin optimally there. I gotta stop using that word. That word's stupid. Alright, it's 11 o'clock. We're still, I think, slightly ahead of last time. Yeah, no, no, just one last quick comment. Like, I know I've, I have like two or three videos talking about what I want the Star Fox series to do. And I would like to see Star Fox Grand Prix become a real thing, just like as a spin-off game. But I think that was just a rumor at this point, because we've heard nothing since. And I don't know. Like, that would be a cool spin-off, but I have a number of things I've said about that series that I think would be good ideas. I don't know. It's never gonna happen, though. I just don't want it to see... I don't want to see the Star Fox series become an open-world No Man's Sky where all you do is just, like, collect artifacts and scan stuff slowly instead of the fast-paced arcade shooter that it is. Like, there's nothing wrong with the on-rails concept. People are like, oh, it's so outdated and oh, no, no. It's like... It's like saying you can't have fun playing Tetris anymore or you can't have fun playing any of the old Mario Brothers games. It's stupid. F good fun doesn't have an expiration date. You might need a break from it every now and then and do other stuff. And yeah, new stuff is always good, but like it doesn't need to be thrown and burnt and I don't know. I just never get along with the majority, I think. Majority opinion always just gets under my skin and I disagree with everything. <laughs> That said, though, yeah, Star Fox has been hurting lately, so... Anyways, Zelda! There was something else that I was gonna talk about when I was getting the Great Fairies mask. I was like, oh, I could say a lot on that, too, I don't remember what it was. Something about getting mad and... Oh, it was something about perfectionist. Yeah, I do remember, kind of. But before that... The next room is going to be crazy. If 
you watched last time when I did the four cycle failure thing. I took my time in this next room and tried to bubble everybody. But I'm gonna try to do it like I used to as a kid and just go! And hope that they don't whip me down on the ground level. This is where it gets- wait, hold on. Can I get him? Yes, okay, well that helps. Oh jeez, he's right there! He's getting louder! What's happening, camera? Stop it! Get in there! It's a stupid woodfall. I hate this place. It's not bad, but Deku Link is definitely the weakest of the three Links. Zora Link is my favorite, definitely. Even though combat-wise, he's kind of weak. Alright, what time is it? Wow, we're really ahead. We're an hour ahead of last time. In-game, of course. So get the bow, do I even bother getting the boss here? No, no, we don't. We, I just did this, and it was very tight. I beat it. I got the All Knights mask, but it was tight at this point. So I'm gonna get the bow and get out of here. The Razor Sword is gonna be the next hectic thing, because I want to get that done this cycle, too. And there's a time limit to that, too. And I need a sword for a certain amount of time to do a lot of stuff. Alright, there's the bow. Uh, get my buttons here. Um, yeah. Somebody made a comment. It's interesting to see where people put items, like what C buttons people put items. And it is interesting to see. Everybody's got their own thing that they're used to from playing these as a kid. I don't know, the ocarina... I know it defaults in Ocarina of Time to see right what is happening here. But I've always had it on C left, I don't know why. And that's another thing. The C button names, what do you say? Do you say C left or left C? High C fruit punch? I always said the direction first, but then I... I don't know, I interchanged the two, I think. Don't speak to him. Okay, good. I see, I'm learning my lesson. It takes three times of playing and many freaking failures. And this guy takes 12 years to get to the counter. All right, to Snowhead we go. Well, so now we get into the video editing mode where I'm gonna be like cutting all of this because the Goron's Lullaby is such a headache. It's not that bad, still better than Breath of the Wild. Still way faster than Breath of the Wild too. That's the thing. That that's another thing, that's the other Star Fox thing. Like, somebody was arguing with me, and I should've just stopped and let him be happy, but... I don't know, I... Dude, I hate this one. No, stop it. See, sometimes the back pedal doesn't work. You see how Link was doing, like, some weird side back thing? I don't know. I don't know, I think this is usually where I cut it, so before I go on my rant... I better just shoot the ice. And then I'll see you wherever I see you, mid Goron Lullaby nonsense. I think this is still faster. I don't know. And now, since this is where it like soft locks for me, well, not yet. I'm gonna use save states just in case. Okay. 3:02 a.m. Yeah. Because I use my time wisely. See, it's doing it again. What the hell, man? Z, back... Okay, whatever. Stupid. Yeah, shut up. Hoot, hoot, hoot. Do, 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 do. I actually like his theme. For as much hate as that owl gets for chewing your ear off. Why is that a thing? Isn't it weird that certain animals in fiction are universally depicted a certain way, like Owl and Winnie the Pooh. He's like supposed to be this um, educated guy, or so he thinks. He actually like can't even spell though. <laughs> but I don't know. Owls are smart. I mean, I guess it's because they are smart animals normally. And now here I was stupid last time too, because this is the perfect time to play the Song of Soaring and just go back to the mountain that way instead of running all the way back. Like a dope. 
and let's hope that it doesn't soft lock. Now I'm worried about the Mountain Village Owl statue now since that happened to me. I don't know what caused it. That never happens. Okay, we're good. It clicked annoyingly though. That kind of hurt my ears. Sorry for your ears too. Okay, so it's uh, right, left, right. <laughs> so stupid, dude. Fast forward shoes. Ah, uh, blah, 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 bottle. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Oh, yeah, the Star Fox thing. Somebody, the guy was getting. I was going back and forth in, like, some comment thread on a review of Starlink. And, uh. I don't know, the guy was just saying, like, he wants to see, like, this game, he doesn't want a game that's done and over within an hour, and I get that, but that's also not what, like, Star Fox was. It's always been about the replay value of, like, going through it again and getting the high score and stuff. But I guess that's not good enough anymore, and all games have to be, like, these big open-world adventures that are, like, 80-plus hours. And I feel like I'm the opposite. Like, this is a long game, technically. It was at one point. But now it's super short. You can beat it in one sitting if you wanted to. Compared to Breath of the Wild, which takes your life away. And as interesting as that is, it also kind of destroys a lot of the gameplay in a way. Like, it's, it's great gameplay. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I do know what I'm saying, but I don't know how to explain it at the moment. My point is, I don't think every series, every franchise needs to become a big open world adventure. Like, that's not the only genre of video game. And the longer the game doesn't, like, longer does not equal better. Sometimes that could be worse because it just drags on. In the case of Starlink Battle for Atlas, a lot- what the heck? Okay, it still worked, we're still moving. I don't know what happened. Yeah, but that game just looks repetitive and dumb. Like, the combat just looks terrible. I don't know. Anyway, dumb baby stuff. What? I'm not gonna get the Don Jero's mask this time, because we're, we're tight on time. We'll get it next cycle or something. To snowhead, fire arrows, we got time. It's still early day one. And that inverted time really is helpful. I'm always way too busy in this game to pay attention to how long it actually is per in-game hour. Plus you gotta factor in the loading screens too. Loading screens being like the transitions, of course. Am I gonna do it for once? Holy crap. It's like I'm a kid again. I can actually do it. That's a depressing thought. I don't know, just stuff you used to be good at as a kid. And if it's like all you ever did, and now you suck at it, it's like, what good are you? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I mean, obviously it's not all you did, but it was a huge chunk of time. All right, this, can I do it in one go? Still have sensitivity with the control stick. No. That's the easy part, too. What the heck? Just go. It's just that one turn. Like three quarters of the way up to the temple entrance. It gets like a really sharp turn, and depending on the sensitivity of your control stick, it can really mess you up. Like this big, sharp right. Nope, see, I, I got... I got careless. Whoa, that was close. Whoa, this hall is dangerous. There ought to be a back door somewhere. Let's try to find it first, shall we? Just a moment. <laughs> oh man, that voice acting is so stupid. But it's awesome. I love Barry. Barry Burton. It's a weapon. It's really powerful, especially against living things. But just take a look at this. Oh, 
All right, remember the horse shit sense. Let's wait for him to blow his little... <laughs> I get Goron Link's face. <laughs> That's so stupid. Did they ever make a plushie of Goron? That would be like the ultimate thing to sit on, like a beanbag curled up Goron Link. All right, I probably shouldn't be bothering with the fairies, but why not? They're right here. What is two seconds of time? Three seconds? Actually, it could be everything, depending on the situation. That's crazy to think about, that two seconds could be- What the heck? Why didn't the fairy- Nah, I'll get him on another trip. Yeah, it is crazy to think about that. Like, two seconds could be the difference between somebody living or dying. Can I fall? Yes! I got it! Falling during the cutscene. Now, where's the switch? Does anybody else think the switch is weird to say now since it's a console? Like, it, like when you're actually talking about pressable switches, and then you're like, I don't know. Cool story, bro! Alright, fire arrows. That's what we're doing. We're doing good. Don't fall, that was weird. I'm actually enjoying this again though, which is good because I've been pretty angry and miserable in my attempts of doing this recently. It's that Gary Busey noise again. <laughs> If you're like me, you like talking to things. Thank you, fish, for being here. Little blowfish. Alright, so this next room we're coming up on just blitz to the end and bomb the wall. Don't even worry about anything. Question is, is the roll actually gonna help? Nope, I did it at the wrong point. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> that did not go as planned, but okay. It had a nice flavor to it. Um, what are we doing? We're gonna get the fairy, why not? We have time. Now, see, I was so stupid in that last playthrough, too. The next room, I didn't solve the puzzle. Well, I was, like, super tight on meeting Anju or something, right? I don't remember what I was doing at that point in that video. This is a different video. Why are you talking about that? Because you're dumb, that's why. You dope! Yeah, but I do have stuff to talk about in terms of, you know... Uh, I don't know, it's that whole self-perfectionist attitude thing. I think that's what... Was, I don't even know, I can't even get the sentence out. Alright, this fairy... We'll talk about that stuff later, I guess. Got it, even though it's not visible. I, want, I was gonna play this on my actual N64, but then I remembered there's no fast forward, and it's also a lot blurrier, so I didn't. All right, this puzzle is not hard. I don't know why I didn't solve it that last video. This is just merely to get to the other side. And I don't even, why am I explaining it? People know this already. It's not like the chores mask is new. Now we push this down and then just use that as a stepping stool. And then the fire arrows are right there. What time are we at here? All right, so we're just at the brink of the night of the first day. 11.30, we gotta be in North Clocktown. Ideally, if I could get the Giant's Wallet before then, that'd be perfect, but there's also time afterwards if I don't. It's actually pretty easy though. I did it in that soft lock playthrough. I got the wallet way before the bomb shop lady. I had like an hour and a half or two hours in game 
to kill. I don't know, this is how I like to play this game. I don't know, it's just fun. It's stupid, like, I'm more obsessed with scheduling this stuff out than scheduling out my real life. Which I guess makes sense, it's a video game, of course it's it's meant to be fun. It's kinda, it's no different than a Harvest Moon game or Stardew Valley, like scheduling your day that way. To get the most done before sunset or whatever. Like you could look at that stuff and be like, okay, why don't you turn the game off and apply that same enthusiasm to your real life instead? You dope. <laughs> you have to add your dope at the end of it. Anyway, there's the fire arrow, so... Clock Town, Zora Mask, Hookshot. So we need bombs, too. Well, we'll get them later. That's not a bomb. I waited too long! That was stupid. I don't know what happened there. My fingers did not... What is with the sun? Look at the sun. The top of it is completely horizontal. <laughs> Almost like a platform you could stand on. That is weird. Now this I usually cut out too, because who wants to see me push my cow to the shore? But I do like to bonk against the walls. Bing bong. I really should see what the Zora band is up to. That was always one of my favorite parts of this game. Alright, hit the statue. Do I get magic, or do I just go? Yeah, we've got this, no problem, man. This isn't hard at all. And I know I did this once, years ago, when I was still technically a kid. I was later than a kid, probably a teenager. But I used to do this three-cycle thing on the N64, so it's really stupid that I attempted it now, present day, in that last failed recording thing. And I botched it up in four seconds. Like, how do you not remember? And even when you think about the game's events, it's stupid. It's... Alright, so there's Night of the First Day. But yeah, it... all it takes is just understanding the events of the game. And you could easily schedule it. Like, three cycles is normal. It's not even hard. I don't know. And I know not everybody plays that way, so... In a way, it could be condescending to everybody else who doesn't beat it in three cycles, but I, I don't know. I just like to say I'm stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Da, 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 da. Pirates are sailing the seas. <laughs> I like this, though. I don't know. It's satisfying infiltrating this thing. And what's really cool about this first cycle is we're going to have to come back here when we don't have a sword. And I do remember doing that as a kid. So it's all going to be about the bow and Deku Nuts, which I don't know if I have enough Deku Nuts. I mean, there's other ways. You don't need the Nuts. But it definitely is fun to fight them that way. But for now, hook shot and one egg. As long as we grab that egg now, um, we should only have to make one more trip here. Once we acquire three bottles, unfortunately this route requires you to do the beaver race to get that third bottle because you will, there's no way for you to have Romani's milk bottle or Madame Aroma's milk bottle. Oh, come on, I like doing that smooth, and I'm pushing it the wrong way. Wait, no I'm not. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm goofing up already. That's another clear example of, like, stuff like that. I just, 
All the little things are so much fun to do when you pull them off smoothly with no botch ups, but as soon as you do the smallest botch up, it sends me in a spiraling rage, and I don't know, I just have no patience for it. Because I know I'm capable of better than that. It's stupid, I don't know, it's like this weird... I don't know, I used to be like that as a kid too with everything. Like it had to be as close to perfect as I could get it. Like it doesn't have to be perfect in the large scheme of the world, but in terms of my own skill level, it has to be perfect. Otherwise, it's not good enough and everything's horrible. And I have that mentality still about a lot of stuff. Especially with like when you factor in how many times I've replayed this game, there's no excuse for me to suck at anything. But then that's way too strict of a mindset at the same time. It's like, you gotta forgive yourself for making a... Everybody does a little small mistake. And it's a stupid video game, who cares? But... When it, it's just like anything, it's kind of displacement of anger, in a way. When you're stressed out about real life stuff, the smallest thing that even is supposed to be enjoyable that goes slightly awry can send you over the edge, you know? And that is definitely how I've been lately. <laughs> I mean, you could kind of hear it at the end of my four cycle failure thing. Wait, don't... Okay. Okay. That was better. But yeah, I'm also probably going to be making a channel update video soon, because there are some changes, I think, that are going to be happening. Not to the con... well... Yeah, not to the content I put out, but when, I don't know, just real life stuff is starting to get in the way. There's a lot of changes that are going around, so I'm going to be finishing this and is there one on the left? I don't know, we'll see what happens, but... Kind of going back to the whole scheduling a video game versus scheduling your real life. That's kind of becoming a really pressing issue at the moment. In multiple facets, financially, and all kinds of other crazy stuff, so... I kind of got to get my priorities in line here. And plus, basically, the, my whole recording situation, where I typically record and commentate and stuff, I'm gonna have a house guest soon, basically, is what, the, and it's gonna interfere with a lot of stuff because I have anxiety and just a, in general, uh, I don't like to talk when other people are listening, which I know is really weird because all of you are listening right now, but that's different. That's like the final product. But as I'm doing it, and all the botch-ups that happen in between, I don't like people to know, like, oh, he's being stupid in the next room over there, you know? <laughs> it's a dumb mentality, it's like, it goes back to that anxious, social anxiety is what it is. Anyway, let's dump off this egg. Alright, saving the state again, because we've come about an hour's worth of playing here. Maybe less. But we did it! We got everything we need for the Ocean Spider House. Let's do it. And we've got plenty of time, dude. Even, we, these things are quick. I know where the spiders are in this thing. I still don't know the swamp one, because I hate the swamp spider house. Swamp ass. Um, get out of my way. Keep rolling, rolling. All right, stop with the limp biscuit, you stupid. Uh, bombs. Yeah, this place is quick, though, so we'll definitely get the Giant's Wallet, and that's all there is to it, man. As soon as you got that, that secures, then just go save the bomb lady, and you're good. You got the game down in three cycles. The only way you could botch it up is if you're stupid in the later cycles. So don't be stupid. That's the moral of that story. Yeah, action slide. We're doing this. Arrow. I like to move quickly when I can. Of course, then the analog stick is like, oh, you want to aim at the moon? Okay. That's a fence. That's a mask. Uh, we're 
get the one in the mask first. And, um, is there one on the ledge? I always forget if there's one on the ledge up here or if that's just the other rooms. Anyway, don't waste time with it. Let's go into the library and do that one. I know I cut this out last time, but I'll show it this time. It's not really that big. I'll probably still cut out the bottom of the well when we get to that next cycle, though, because I hate that place. It's stupid. It's like 11 minutes or so of just nonsense. Cool in concept, just aggravating to replay. But I mean, that's kind of goes back to the whole Breath of the Wild thing and like games being 80 plus hours long. I mean, look at how much I'm fast forwarding this game and I just have like no patience for nonsense. That's kind of my mentality. Like, I do enjoy a good long adventure that I can get lost in, but... It is harder to find that time as an adult, too. If you're, you've got your priorities straight. If you got them crooked, then you can get lost in the video game at the sacrifice of your own life. I don't know, maybe there's a middle ground there that I just have yet to learn. All right, we got him. Got to listen for that crawling noise. If it's not going, they're clear in that room. If for some reason you've never seen this before, there's 30 gold sculptures in both swamp and this spider house. And they're very quick. It's like a 10 minute pit stop, really, if you know what you're doing. Maybe less than 10 minutes, actually. We're already halfway there. Whoops. That's not what I meant to pull out. Whoa, I'm almost dead. I don't have anything, I don't think, either, so I gotta be careful. Going back to the whole thing about video games conflicting with responsibility, kind of. I just always look at my most successful family and friends and people my age and just how much time they spend playing video games versus how much time I do and the difference financially and socially. And I'm like bottom of the barrel compared to them because they don't play as much as I do. That's, I think that's where that whole self-hate thing comes in, and the conflict with this hobby. And also, too, just the way that they play games. I know I mentioned it before, when I think it was in my GoldenEye randomizer thing. How that game, everybody knows that game. That game is the, probably the most popular Nintendo 64 game next to Mario. And like every adult at the time knew it. And they called it Bond instead of GoldenEye 007, like it's actually called. And all they cared about was, you know, the multiplayer. You play a few quick matches with your friends. It's kind of like Call of Duty these days. Everybody that just goes on and does the same thing every day after work. Same typical deathmatch format or something. Which is weird to me that that's popular, and that's typically how a lot of people play games. Yet, then you have people pushing for every game needs to be like this big open world adventure that takes 900 years to complete. Yeah, nice bomb strategy there. I don't know. I think too much about this crap, and I need to not think about it. But 
But I think what I was getting at is... A lot of people buy a game just to experience it once, and then when they experience it, they're done. They never go back and replay it, ever. Unless it's like an old school game that... Replaying it is maybe an hour of your time. I don't know, just so many people I know in real life, that's the mentality they have, is why ever replay a video game? It makes no sense. But that's a weird way that the world is, too. Everybody's just constantly pushing for... Everything has to be brand new. Everything has to be changing. There we go, we did it. Sweet. That's how it's done, baby. And look at that, we've got like two hours before the bomb shop lady. Well, an hour and a half. So yeah, it is pretty tight. Even inverted an hour and a half, that's not too long away. But it's definitely doable and that's awesome. Sweet. Now we just gotta save the lady, and we are on course for beating this in three cycles. No problem at all. Cycle two and three are gonna be a joke. Like, this cycle is a beast. We're doing Woodfall, Snowhead, and Great Bay. So all cycle two is Andrew Caffey, The Ranch, and Stone Tower. And then cycle three is just a throwaway cycle to finish up the mayor and grandma and whatever, the other priority mail recipient. Like, it's super quick. Cycle three is a joke. It's not even a cycle. In this, again, this is like a 95% thing. I'm going to go in here to get a red potion. Even though it's 20 rupees more than the swamp, I just don't feel like warping to the swamp. I feel like that's me in real life. That dude just chilling behind a counter hates life. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, there's the dancers and guru guru. Speaking of, we've got time, right? Do we? Uh, sure we do. I don't know why I'm hesitating. Clearly we have time. That's another thing I could talk about. Um. In addition to the whole anxiety thing, I have depression. And I'm not gonna go on like a whole tirade about that. Don't worry. But every now and then, even like I could be on a roll, like seven months. Usually it's not that long actually, but let's say I have like four solid months where I'm making good progress and everything. And then out of nowhere, it just creeps up and I don't know, people compare it to, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, it's, it is an illness, I guess, even though at times I even question it. But yeah, when it does just come up out of nowhere, it smacks you across the back of the head with a piece of, like, 2 by 4 And... I don't know, it's just, it's enough to cloud your thoughts where even the most simple thing that you should remember, or, like, you can't. And that interferes with making these videos, too. Like, sometimes I just can't even commentate at all. Because I just don't have it in me. Alright, lady. Where are you? 12 o'clock, on the nose, she comes out, yep. Oh, dad, dad! Yeah. We're doing it, man. I'm gonna save state, though. I've come too far for the game to soft lock. It really only happened that one time, but like I said, I'm nervous about it now, so slow everything down, first of all. And I'll probably save state during this whole thing. Okay, so, what are we in the middle of doing? We have the red potion, so we gotta go do nighttime day one, Econa Graveyard. 
and Shiro the Carpenter. It's also, I could do the dancer stuff. Could do the hand in the toilet. But we could also wait till day two for that stuff. That's a sentence. Imagine if somebody just heard you say that. Yeah, oh yeah, the hand in the toilet. You're like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, only in the context of this game does that make any logical sense to even be words muttered together in the form of a sentence. You suck at everything you do. There we go. Shield, don't get cursed. We don't have the Song of Storms yet. No, we really don't need Link's sword. Nice. All right. <laughs> I never knew that that had a gulping noise. That was weird. Okay, so we need the bow, we need the ocarina, and Goron Mask is fine enough. I made Chef Boyardee. Uh, big beefaroni. You know, you gotta get the big ones. That one tastes different than the regular beefaroni. Yeah, well, anyway, my point is now my whole apartment smells like uh, Chef Boyardee, and it's not actually a bad smell. I wish they had an air freshener. <laughs> this is stupid, dude. Why would you ever want your house to smell like beefaroni? It's not even a real thing. It's like a toxic orange sauce. Oh, I botched it up. We're gonna need a second bow shot. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Let's go, pal, me and you. Yeah, I got you with the bullet. Once again, man, I want Goron Link and Zora Link and Fierce Deity Link in Smash Brothers, and maybe Deku. I can't really think of anything Deku except for the bubble and maybe a recovery move. But that's just another one of those gaming wishes that's never gonna happen. That's another thing, if I'm gonna record the new Smash Brothers that's coming out, I need to get a new capture card that captures at 60 frames per second, because I don't have one. Mine is limited to 30. And that's a big deal, apparently, on the internet, so yeah, there's another 200 bucks for you. For no reason. So I'm probably not gonna do it, actually. <laughs> Unless I get a magic windfall of money. I can't even tell you the amount of money I spent on recording equipment, video editing software, microphone, all that crap. And I'm never gonna make it back. It's, I don't know, it's just a terrible investment. Expense- every hobby is expensive though. I remember various hobbies I tried to get into later in life. Like, everything is several hundred dollars per small piece that you need. I don't know, the world is just really good at making life difficult. Unnecessarily. It doesn't have to be, that's the thing. It's all people, too. You ever notice that? All the problems in the world are because of people. If it was just you sitting there on your farm in Switzerland or something, because everybody has a garden in Swi Switzerland and that's why they stay out of wars and stuff. I know that's a completely non sequitur rant that makes no sense. But, <laughs> I don't know, man. There would be nothing wrong if you just grew stuff in the ground and made meals every day and entertained yourself that way. But it's other people. Everybody's got to have something. Everybody's got to, I don't know. 
Stupid, there's too many people in the world. We, mass slaughter, make it happen. Nah, just kidding, sort of. <laughs> Although, the population does need to be thinned out, I think. And I will be the first one to go. Let's use this thing, we never use this thing. Excuse me. Come here. I've been watching a lot of Bill Burr comedy recently, too. I love that dude. I don't know, just how angry he is all the time. I know I've talked about this in some other video before, too, but... I don't know, everything he says is just so logical and on point to me. I feel his frustration with the PC culture that has blown up. I get being nice to people and being tolerant, but there also should not be a limit on telling somebody if they're being a jackknob. Like, you should be... people need to hear that. <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe that there's only three Iron Knuckles in this game. That's ridiculous. There's this one, the Day 2 Grave, and then the Twin Mold Moon Dungeon. Well, how many does Ocarina of Time have? It has the two... No, it has three in the Spirit Temple, two in Ganon's Castle, so I think that's it. They're really skimping on the Iron Knuckles, man. I still want that ROM hack where it's just nothing but iron knuckles everywhere, even if it slows the game down to a crawl because it's like too much for the system to handle or something. I don't know why that would be the case, but... Alright, we're going to Woodfall. We got a temple to finish, although... We could also do Snowhead. We're tight on time. And we have the razors. That's the thing. We have to deposit the sword before day two. I'm feeling woodfall. Alright, we gotta move it, man. I don't know. No. See, that's the kind of horseshit we don't have time for. Bonking on the little tin foil. That's not even tin foil. Shut up! That's the door, that's not the chest. I need to get over there to trigger the chest. Why didn't I do that before? Because I didn't know, that's why. Gotta move. I mean, in every recording I've done so far, I've had a really quick adult wall kill. But since, this is my luck, though. What? Ugh. Frickin' buttons, man. Now, when I need it to be quick more than ever, how much you want to bet it's gonna be? Not quick. Alright, I gotta get the boss key, that's a pain. Yeah, we gotta beat Adol Wall, bottle up the princess, and get the heck to the, the smithy. Before day two, and it's very quickly becoming day two right now. But this is the kind of pressure I like about this game. Does the fairy come? Yes, it's moving. It's moving mid cutscene. Look at it dancing around Link. Wait, it's, what? I didn't pick it up. What the heck happened? And now I'm gonna miss the platform. Okay, good. What the heck happened to the fairy? Look at it just chilling over there, you dope. Get over here, and don't get stuck under the platform for some dumb reason. It's happening, is- oh no, okay. Uh, what am I doing? I need bombs, bombs. 
Doesn't let you pause when the stupid fairy message is up. Alright, you, no patience! Go away! Go away! Four o'clock, man. We've got one hour. We've got like an hour and a half, technically, because we need walking time to get to the building itself. I could always do this again, cycle two. The razor sword business, I mean. But I'm beating Snowhead this cycle. We're getting the gold dust. I don't want to have to do it again. That's just unnecessary. might pull this off. I don't know, man. 415. It really all comes down to a Dolwa. And how cooperative he is with dying as fast as possible. Which really, all you gotta do is stun him with a stab or an arrow and then spin attack him like crazy and it usually kills him in one cycle. But if you do anything beyond stun and spin attack... Like if you do stun, stab, then spin attack, he's gonna break out of it. I've discovered. This is just backtracking that is hindering this progress. Move it! 4.30. And we still got the three bubble fairies in the next room. I'm literally gonna have like 30 seconds in game time. Or. Yeah, 30 minutes, whatever that is, inverted. To beat a dull wall. Maybe 45 minutes. Die. You're right there too, so you. Die. Now, don't miss this jump like you did on that last. Thing. You're you're screwing it up already. You gotta move, man. You gotta move. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, where's the next one? He's down here. Get him. Deku. It's almost five o'clock, dude. The butt clench is real. Okay. No. Jump, flower. You know... I'm gonna save state just in case something stupid happens, and also because I'm not above cheating if this goes wrong. <laughs> Although, I actually I kinda am above that. Like I I'm already ashamed that I failed something so stupid. But I'm still gonna save state anyway in case something stupid happens. Oh boy. C buttons are good. Alright, a doll off. Don't be a Douche. Five o'clock on the nose. That's already screwing up. That's not where the bow is, you dope. Come on, dive at me. No, don't dance around like a fairy. Stupid. Stab you. Stop blocking. You're already. Oh, I stabbed twice. See, I didn't. I did stab, stab instead of stab, spin, 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 spin. You stupid. Yes. What the heck, man? Don't be doing this. All right, come here, come here. Slash the bomb. He didn't slash the bomb. That sucks. Stop blocking. Stop blocking. Do you not see the clock? Stop blocking! Dive at me! Come on, dive! He's dancing like a fairy. Yes, get him! You're kidding me! Oh, 
Oh my god. I told you he was gonna be a troll this time, I knew it! When it's most intense, man. Oh. We did it though, and time has stopped. The clock is gone. Okay, everybody simmer down. The chaos is over. Bing bong 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 bong. That was nuts. I think we're good though. What was it, like 5.30 last I saw? Oh, but since I did this one first, we're gonna have to hear stupid tattle go on and on. Yeah, shut up. Get in the bottle and let me get out of here. Oh, we're a lot better than I thought. I don't know, man. Just that boss music was intense. He's dancing around like a fairy. <laughs> so stupid. At least he didn't waste time calling the bugs. Although that's like a cutscene thing that I think stops the clock. Okay, we're good. I think that's as most chaotic as this is going to get. Do 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 do. I think this is the only Zelda character to have nipples, aside from Goron Link. Okay. I'm still kind of reeling from the intensity of that thing, man. <laughs> Stock up, we got Snowhead to finish now. Well, I got the fairies too, and the Deku Princess. So I guess we should do that first, huh? Whoa, what is happening with the pause screen? Like, it's rippling like water. What the heck? Emulation. Such a sensation. All right, well, this works good. This puts us in the back end so we could get the fairy, then the heart piece, the rupees, dump off the princess, get the scent of masks, or mask of scent. <laughs> the scent of mask. Gotta love that rubber smell. It's actually a terrible smell. I hate that smell. Fairy fountains seem like a peaceful place to chill. Nice glittery curtains. My dad hates glitter. I don't know, like he sees like a little speck of glitter on him and it, it just ruins his day. I always feel bad for him like whenever we're hanging out with my niece or something and she's playing with some arts and crafts thing. Like it, it, glitter gets everywhere, man. What even is glitter? It's like mild bits of glue and... I don't know. There's so many little useless like arts and craft gadgets and gizmos in the world. It's so much useless crap. Humans suck, man. We're just, we just trash everything. Anyway, let's dump the princess. A red abu. My son is dead. Sorry about your son. Do I look familiar? That's actually kind of messed up. This game has some deep things in it. It definitely does. What the heck? Going the wrong way already. I know, I know I touched on this before too. A lot of moments of this game. When you think about it and you're listening to only the soundtrack and remembering the game, it just seems so much bigger than it is. But then when you're playing it, it's like a boy in a skirt and fairies. And 
It's really not very deep at all. Like, I would love to see this game remastered with, like, an extremely dark ambiance. Like, keep the mood that's there. That is why everybody loves this game in the first place. But just heighten the horror element and, like, the darkness. I don't I guess make it more mature in a way. Where it's, like, truly terrifying and heartbreaking. And kind of leaves you as the player... Reeling a little bit, I guess, for lack of a better word, at the moment. I don't know, it is kind of like the same way when you hear a really powerful song and it kind of like... Your whole stomach drops, you know? It's cool when things are capable of doing that to you. And this game has the framework to make something like that happen. But it's just so coded in, you know, Zelda stuff that it's just like, oh, okay. The like Caffey's a little kid. Oh, so, so sad. Like, it doesn't... I don't know. But that moment, that song when you're in the little... Um, hotel room, whatever it is, with Andrew just waiting for him to run up those stairs and everything's shaking. Like, it's such an awesome moment. And it's because of the music, mostly. I don't know, the imagination is a powerful thing and it always makes things better than they're capable of being as they are. All right, we've got Snowhead Temple to finish now. Let's do it. And we've got the hook shot. We've got the Zora mask. This is this is a joke. Snowhead, Snowhead as it's meant to be played. Don't smack me, please. I really need to play Twilight Princess. It's been forever since I've played that game. I know I talked about this recently too. When I went on that whole thing about how I only have the original Wii game and not HD, and how I think the original still kind of somehow looks better than the HD remake. I've seen a lot of people hating on Twilight Princess, especially like the art. Mostly in terms of Smash Brothers, like everybody's so relieved that they're, they've ditched all the Twilight Princess designs for all the Zelda characters. I mean, I definitely like Ocarina of Time Ganondorf. But I also remember loving his Twilight Princess thing, even though he is a little chubbier. He just looks so menacing, especially when you see him on his little throne chair for the first time in that game. And that cutscene, too, with the sages. That was so awesome. It was like the first time he actually seemed menacing and not like Ricky Ricardo with a nasal problem. <laughs> I don't know. Because his laugh in Ocarina of Time is just ridiculous. Whereas in Twilight Princess, they just dumbed down the the nasal. They gave them cold medicine or something. I don't know what I'm saying. They're stupid. As far as Link, I don't know what the best. Well, Fierce Deity Link is the coolest designed Link there ever was, in my opinion. Zora Link is definitely awesome too. Can you hookshot this thing? I think I remember trying this and it clanks against the invisible platform. There is a way, you gotta get on a specific- I think I gotta go to the left to hookshot it. Yeah, this is- well, you know, by the time I waste all this time, I might as well just lens of truth it. It's not a big deal. It's no big deal. <laughs> the original E-Trade Baby commercial cracked me up. Then they just went overboard with it. I haven't even watched Super Bowl commercials in recent years. It's not my thing, really. 
I've never really been into sports. They're enjoyable on occasion, but I can't get into it to, enough to have like a favorite team and follow them to the ends of time, you know, and get into like huge arguments like most people do. They're like, no, here you have no idea. <laughs> there I go again with <laughs> I don't know. I'm insane. As a kid, I played baseball for one year and I absolutely hated it. I played soccer a bunch and basketball. It was never really that great, though. In terms of watching sports, occasionally I can enjoy a basketball game. Hockey. I like hockey. And hockey video games are a ton of fun. They're probably the most fun sports game there are. That's why I'm still mad that there's not an NHL game on the Switch, even though they've kind of gone downhill because it's EA. And they ruin everything. EA in the early 2000s was awesome. I don't know what happened. It's business, people, money, economics, politics. It ruins everything. Everything sucks. <laughs> Um, such a cranky old guy. I don't know, the thing that gets to me about that is, you know, everybody behind a project that ends up being something everybody hates because of microtransactions or just, the, like, in video games being the thing. Like, every project that ends up ultimately sucking, like, the end product is just everybody hates it or is unhappy with it. There's gotta be somebody that's behind the development of it that's just like, this sucks, why are we doing it? But there's somebody ahead of them in the business that's like, no, I told you to do this, you gotta do it. And there's nothing they can do. Cause God forbid you tell somebody that they're wrong. You stand up to management, stand up to authority and tell them they're stupid, and to be a human instead of caring about the money. Uh. I don't have any kind of ideals for the world, <laughs> that's for sure. Like that goes with anything, like, if you start complaining about stuff, ultimately somebody's gonna be like, okay, so how would you fix it? What would you do to change it? And that really puts you on the spot because stuff is really complicated and... Most of the time, I think, when people are complaining, they don't really know how to change it themselves. They have ideas, but they also haven't fully brainstormed, like, the consequences and stuff of every little thing, so... Don't know. I am not even paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm just like going through the motions so many times through these temples. Ah, I'm just gonna Zora jump. Why not? I know I have fire arrows, but I just don't feel like sitting through that animation. Although ultimately, it probably would have been faster than the route I chose. Hey, this is a good time to use the hookshot. Great example of this dungeon being beautifully set up to be a hookshot dungeon. You're supposed to use the elevator room, but if you have the hookshot, why not? Now, I don't have a sword, so... Hmm, the Lazalfos up ahead. Goron Link, I guess. He's he takes care of business, man. He's chubby, he's got a flaming fist, and he's got a butt of steel. Or rock, really. Alright, I guess go for the fairy first, and then... Yeah, see how much smoother that is? Why did I change that, too? All the past recordings I've done, I've gone to the right first, and these guys pummel me with s snowballs. Um,
Ooh, I was aiming for the other thing, but that was still cool. I like those little Z target shots. It's like that Clint Eastwood moment in Twilight Princess, the hidden village. That was so awesome. Especially with the Wii mode. That was it just felt so good. Getting them with the bow. Alright, over here. I'm gonna stomp you. Holy crap! Why don't I do that all the time? Goron Link for Smash, man, I keep saying it. Oh, Majora's Mask Link. Majora's Mask everything. Don't even make another Breath of the Wild. Make a Majora's Mask in the... That's like Breath of the Wild, but better, and really dark, and scary, and full of fear. I don't know what I'm saying. I do know what I'm saying. I don't know, maybe I'm still just sick of Breath of the Wild from having played it like three or four times. Which is ridiculous. I know, because that game's long. Can't even believe, believe I've played it that many times. Back to back, too, mostly. There was some Splatoon in the middle there. And Mario Odyssey, but... It is kind of funny, though, that that's kind of the consensus I'm seeing a lot. A lot of people... ...like Breath of the Wild, but are disappointed in several things about it. So they can't fully be like, oh yeah, it's like the greatest Zelda of all time or anything like that. Which it definitely is not. Alright, are we doing this? I don't have a sword, though, so I can't even jump slash. I'm gonna have to toggle the stick. Yes, got it! Alright. <laughs> That's scary, man. Uh, is there a torch? I hear everything clicking, that N64 fire sound. Alright, we are on our way to the boss. So then, all that's left at this point, we gotta get the sword, we gotta get a bottle from the beavers, we gotta get all the eggs at that point. Once we get the bottle, we go to Pirate's Fortress. And we're basically ending off this cycle with Great Bay Temple, and then finally purchasing the All Knights Mask. And that will be a very good first cycle. Actually, what am I doing? You could probably grab that Azora Link. Ah, yeah, well, we'll just roll off the thing. I always like this part of the temple. I always punch this one just in case. But then, whoa, whoa. This. It just feels good to charge up and unleash like that. That's what she said. What? Stop punching the door and just go. <laughs> I know doors are frustrating. How do we want to take this guy out this time? I mean, arrows are the faster way. Can we go three for three in my recording attempts of getting this guy with only arrows? See the pot? Side hop to the pot. I am really far behind the pot. Oh well, we're gonna go with it anyway. I broke the pot, that's not good. Ah, it really is all about that pot. I think that's the only way that he doesn't hit you. All right, well, backup strategy. We're still gonna use arrows. This is good, though. I like fighting him legitimately, sort of. I can't see him. Where are you? There you are. Don't get me! Yes, I'm in the perfect spot. Ah, oh, the rock. I love this boss music, man. Alright, let's do it, man. We're, we're chasing him head on! Just like the old school days, doing it like you're supposed to. Come here, pal! Ooh, right in the nose. Did that not knock him over? I guess you gotta go the same direction as him. 
That doesn't seem right. This is such an awesome fight. Get him! Yes! Alright, well, hold on, I'm already out of roll. Let's use arrows. That's more fun to do when you're still spike rolling and you're just, like, grinding his neck. You get, like, lodged right in between his head and his body and just keep rolling on him. What? How did we both miss? That's a good place to hide, too. Stand by the door and just wait for him. You could get him with arrows that way if you're, like, about to die. He can't hit you by the door. There we go. It's definitely fun to fight him. Using a variety of techniques instead of just doing the arrow thing I usually do. So now we've got to do the Goron race. As much as that sucks, Powder Keg. Can't do Donjero because that guy doesn't exist when the snow goes away. So that's going to have to be Cycle 2. i got to write that down so I don't forget to come get that. It's time to do the stupid powder keg and the dumb baby rage of the stupid Gorons that cheat and bump you off the mountain. Is there anything else over here that I could do? I mean, all that's left is the beef, but we can't do that at this point. Bomb bag and heart piece don't matter. Oh yeah, that's another thing. If for some reason you didn't watch the other video, this is not a 100% playthrough, it's 95%. 95% being my own made up number where you don't get Dompe's bottle and you don't play any stupid mini game that doesn't mean anything. Did I say you don't get Tingle's maps either? You don't do that. You don't get the heart pieces. Yeah, just all the nonsense nobody has time for. Alright, can we do it first try? I didn't get the stupid magic. I always forget about it because it dumps you out at the bottom of the mountain way away from the fountain. Cheating. Alright, let's do it. Stick to the inside of every possible corner. Get out of here. Stop it. Okay. Oh no, they're gonna bomb me, aren't they? Don't do it! Don't do it! Too many bumps and you lose the spikes! Alright, trees. There's a way to navigate them closer to the inside, but that works too. Okay, we're good, we're up ahead. Now nobody come flying behind me. This is another spot that sucks when you lose your spikes. All right, scariest part of it all. Haha, you hit the post, dope. Yes! No rubber banding, please. I said no, stop it. Oh, this is perfect. Stick to the inside, stop bumping against the mountain. Get out of here. Oh, look at that guy on the left trying to, no, don't even think about it. What the heck? Dude! Mm. I'm gonna punch you. Where are you? Get over here. Oh my god. Yeah, I can't believe. Mm. <laughs> this mini game blows chunks. Third attempt, everything sucks. Hate you, gonna hit you with my spikes. Wait a minute. Are we gonna pull? Get out of here. Yes! Yes! Yes, we're gonna get over here. I'm gonna punch you. You don't? Okay, it took three attempts, but it always takes three attempts lately. It's, I don't know. It's stupid. 
Alright, let's get the heart piece, why not? Simmer down a little. Do 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 Zelda music is always awesome, cause Koji Kondo's a beast. Do 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 and so is everybody else. That typically works on it. Like Wind Waker had fantastic music, and that wasn't Koji Kondo. Oh my gosh, you're amazing! Do 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 do. Can we get there before the magic depletes? Oh yeah! Nothing like a satisfying bonk. That could be misinterpreted. I like this green fountain. It would probably smell like peppermint. And I approve of the minty lady. Do 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 do. That was weird. Do 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 do. Isn't that a song? What? I think a Family Guy made fun of those. I don't know. I don't know what it was. It's the song of soaring. That's what it is. That guy is really not there. I knew he wasn't, but I had to check. Let's get our sword. Because we got Pirate's Fortress to do. Pew, 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 pew. All right. Second beaver race. I was going to cut all this out, but I just realized I'm stupid. And I need to cash in the razor sword because we need all three empty bottles to do the remainder of Pirate's Fortress in just one more trip. And that's way more important to me than making a third trip. Like, it doesn't matter. I don't need the razor sword to beat the Gerudo Pirates. So I gotta make another quick pit stop back at the smithy and deposit the sword. Which at least then it's off of my mind, I don't have to worry about the clock. Since we're approaching night of the second day. This isn't so bad too, I don't know why. I always complain about having to do the beaver races. It is excessive because you have to race both of them to get the bottle, then you have to race both of them again to get the heart piece, if you care about heart pieces. But every now and then, it's not so bad. And the music is nice. I like the minigame music. And the Zora swimming is always fun. But if you have to do it back to back all the time and you just keep replaying this game and having to do it, I guess that's with anything. It's gonna get old and annoying. Much like my stupid voice. Okay, he did it, big brother. Yes, he did, little brother. Oh, it's the other way around. What is on his chest? Alright, sword. Do, 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 do. This music's awesome every single freaking time. Alright, so now. The Gerudo Pirates are somewhat of a threat. What happens, I wonder? Um, I'm mid-hook shot, what's happening? That's exactly what I was wondering. Okay. See, situations like that, how do they test for that when they're still developing this game and testing for bugs? Like, how would they even think to think, oh, well, what if you're, like, hookshotting something as soon as the time changes and it's triggering that cutscene? I guess the code really just, like, pauses all action so it doesn't matter. We'll go this way. First. Don't have a sword. Um, is this the... Oh, no, this is the rupees. I need... We need to get 500 rupees, that's gonna be a problem. Well, I could always farm on the bird by the ranch. That thing drops 200 rupees a pop. 
Okay, 13 Deku notes. Arrows, and I think the hookshot can be used. Arrows are definitely the key thing, because I don't have a sword. Goron and Zoro, I think, are just... Zoro's too weak, and Goron is too slow. Alright, how do you do this again? It's been a while. That's right, flip, nut, shot. I'm actually concerned now. That's so much fun to fight them like that, though. I love fighting them like that and the Iron Knuckles using the ranged uh, strategy instead of just swinging your sword. It adds more variety to the combat. And it's always there. It's just you don't really think to use it in most situations. Actually, you know what? Let's check the pots. More pots! It's like that Foo Fighters thing. Um... I'm concerned about my nuts. I don't think I have enough to get the job done. And yes, I meant that as it sounds. Um, eight nuts, three guards remaining. Nut bow, nut bow, nut bow, death, right? Or is there another nut bow in there? Where am I and what are we doing? Is this where the rupees are? No, that must be somewhere else. Although, easy access to right where we just were. That's convenient. I chose the proper first door to go into, I think. That never happens, because normally I'm terrible at making good decisions. Isn't there something to the right of this room, or is that a dead? I don't care. We're going to take my notes and hope for the best. What color are you, I wonder? Well, let's get our... This is the orange and yellow one, right? I like that. Very warm. Welcoming. Yeah. Alright. Flip. Come on. I... What? I... My C buttons are not where I'm used to them. Which is stupid, because I put them there. Yeah, this is nothing. All right, four nuts. That should be just enough for the last guard, right? There is only one more, right? Yeah, because I only have one more bottle. Duh. Although I have a legitimate question, because I forget. Those Gerudo guards, do they imprison you or anything? Like, can they throw you out? Like, the ones in Ocarina of Time? How if they did their spin attack, they threw you in their little prison cell? And then you had to go all the way through it again just to get back to where you were. Can that happen here? Like, I would imagine they would just throw you outside and then it would be the same thing. I've always loved Zora Link, even though he can't hit a pot for the life of him. For the life of me, I cannot remember why my fins were too tall to hit the stupid pot on the floor. What? Do, do. Did I take a picture of these guards yet? I don't think I did. I don't necessarily have to. The seahorse is optional. I'm just so used to doing that. That's another one of those things where it's just like, the way I play, just repeat it. I don't know. As much as it sucks to do the same thing day in and day out, it's also sometimes gratifying to do the same stuff. It's kind of like how an OCD thing, like a comfort thing. Like, hit the switch three times, every time. It makes you feel good, it satisfies everything. We might have just enough! Holy crap! I don't even know where I picked up all those nuts, but... I definitely was not paying attention to the counts of those. That was extremely lucky. To have exactly enough. I think I even botched up one of the first uses of it, didn't I? Oh, would you stop? 
there we go. Now I gotta warp out. Well, let's get the picture, I guess. Because I always do it, like I said. Ah, oh, I was hoping to get it. I like that move, too. I really want Zora Link and Smash! How do you guys like to play Smash Brothers? Do you like the big multi-man brawls, or do you like the one-on-one -on -one fights? I always typically played, like, me versus a computer. And that's it. Unless I'm playing with my friends legitimately. I like the team battles. Two versus two. And I like making teams that make sense, too. Like, I don't know. Smile! Oh, would you, I'm gonna go ninjutsu on you, man. Mm, that animation is so cool! Oh, yeah, with the return foot. Zora Link for Smash, man. I keep saying it. <laughs> I didn't want to talk to you, I wanted your horse. Uh, you like that sea horse? Enjoy. I don't want to know what you're going to be doing in here. Alright, I figured I'll cut out all of the Pinnacle Rock stuff, because it's just... Whatever. There's three eggs, and I got the heart piece too. Save state, man. Let's relax. Listen to the bossa nova. Such an awesome song, dude. Insane in the Rain Music did a nice cover of this. I like that guy. Nice jazz covers of... He did a uh, Diddy Kong Racing song, too. A Pirate's Lagoon, or Pirate Lagoon, whatever it is. He had a Yoshi's Island medley, too, that I really enjoyed. Huge respect for musicians, that's for sure. As I frequently say, that's the most memorable aspect of every video game. Is the music. You remember that first and foremost, and the music is powerful enough that all you have to do is hear a song and instantly nostalgia overload, right? And you start remembering the good old days and stuff, and you just want to go back in time. Just from that one song. Even just like the first two seconds of a song. And that's the power of music. Alright. We don't have a sword. But we have time to kill. So. It's a good time to dial star six nine. It's a good time to do the dancer stuff and the toilet hand. So let's go on the topic of relaxing music. The new wave bossa nova is definitely an underappreciated one, but Astral Observatory is definitely good. Sometimes there's something satisfying about the sound of a lit fuse, too. is as integral as of a part to this music as the song itself. God, I love this game, see? Just the songs that we've heard. Here you go, pal. Pal, that came out weird. You know, I was figuring we had time to kill, so let's trade this one in, too, and get the heart piece. I'm not going all the way to the mountain, though. Screw that. Or to the fish land. Because I don't think we even have time for that, actually. I 
never got Andrew's key, so we gotta sneak in the back way. And let's wait till 12 and slow everything down. I don't know why, but for some reason, that's feeling like what I have to do. Do, 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 do. I love that song, man. The music in this game is phenomenal. Have a nice swampy paper. Alright, Camaro and the Dancing Girls. You know how they have names? I was just casually roaming around Clocktown after getting frustrated in one of my failed recordings. And if you keep talking to the Rosa sisters individually when they're like during the day when they're walking around stressed out. They have like three or four different text boxes that pop up and they mention each other's names and I forget them now. They were really weird. The one was like Joda or something? That was like the red one's name. I don't know. I forget. But I didn't know they had names. I just thought they were the Rosa sisters. That guy's really weird. I don't know. I don't like him. I like the nighttime silence, too. For as much as I like the music, every now and then that's welcoming to nighttime ambiance. That's actually one of my favorite things as a kid. Summer nights. Just staying up late and grilling and stuff with my dad. It's good times. Clap, 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 clap. I always love that shot. I know I said it before, but I still like it. I don't know. Let's get our sword and do the Great Bay Temple. Actually, no. New idea. The ranch is open. Let's get the bunny hood now. That'll help out. That way we'll just have it going into the next cycle. It'll just be nice to have in the Great Bay Temple too. I don't know, I think it kind of started out a little rocky. But overall this has been a good cycle. Feels good for everything to finally go in place. Or go the way it's supposed to, I mean. Should we listen to the song again? Doesn't matter, but why not? That guy reminds me of Tim Armstrong from Rancid. Marching in your face, how does it taste? Aw, oh, it interrupted it. <laughs> Favorite temple, let's do it. And we get to hear the new wave bossa nova again. Whoops, wasn't trying to hit that. I was trying to get the pots. More pots! 
Nazi. Do we fast forward or do we relax? We need to relax. Too frantic, too angry. Simmer down. I love that turtle. I like turtles. That was weird. I don't. I never understood why that was popular. I guess just because it was random for the kid to say that. That apparently kid was pretty funny though. It reminded me of like a, he's like a little five-year-old grandpa that just hates everything. Anyway, Great Bay Temple. Love this place, man. I love it. This is another great example. I love the Great Bay Temple, most people don't. I like Star Fox games, most people don't. I like punk music, most people don't. <laughs> I don't know, it's like everything I like, nobody likes it. What the heck? It's like I don't belong in this world or something. Nah, that is kind of a peculiar thing though, that the happiest times in life come from experiences shared with other people. It's basically the time you spend with other people are the best moments. But those moments are hard to come by because it's not easy to find people you fit in with and get along with. And then when you do, they go away because everybody goes their separate way because there's that stupid going full circle back to that whole everything has to be different, constant changing. Why can't everything just stay the same? Like, I would have had no problem with a life where, you know, every single night you go out to a restaurant to eat, and then you come back and play games with your friends, and you work, obviously, in between those moments. That's... those are always, like, the best moments. I don't know. It's a weird existence. I don't like it. I don't like it. One bit! I'm also getting comfortable using up C instead of Z targeting to fine tune my angle of where I'm going next. I never used to do that, but Z target has been failing me. Hopefully I can play this as smoothly as I did last time. At least I did that right. This temple is usually a lot of fun. Fairies look so weird. The chubby cheeks. That's a, that is the thing I've noticed, though. There's a lot of great games that have been coming out in recent years, and even like the last console generation, that are all multiplayer focused. And I just have nobody to play them with. There are people I could scrounge up and be like, do you maybe want to play this? And I'm like, sure. But it'd maybe be like a couple hours and then it'd be done and it'd be like a one and done thing. And that kind of goes full circle back to what I was saying, how most people don't replay video games, as that I know anyway. I know people do, but it's like everybody in my reality does not do these things. I'm going to actually change how I do this and just go straight in here. Look at that, smooth and fluid. I love it. Because we have to come back up there anyway for the to turn on the red pump when we get ice arrows, so might as well grab the fairy then. Saving time, it's good stuff. I miss being a kid, man. I miss having all that time and all those people. I really do miss, like, everybody I grew up with. It's been too long and I'm never gonna see them again, and that's just depressing. Yeah! <laughs> no pointless swimming animation. Ow. 
People will say like, oh, make new friends, but that's what I'm getting at too. It's like, coming in here, what I was saying is the stuff I like, nobody likes, and then the stuff that everybody else likes, I could care less about. And I guess what you're supposed to do is join your friends in the things that they like to do just to share the time with them, even if the thing that they want to do you don't really like yourself. And maybe you'll grow to like it, expand your horizons. Eh, whatever. I'm conflicted, man. I desperately need to be with people and love them to death. And at the same time, I can't stand them. <laughs> Combine that with social anxiety and you've got yourself a... pretty crap way of living. This guy knocked me off last time. I don't want that to happen. Alright, and this is taking too long. He's coming! Okay, good. We're good. Alright, Wart, as you guys kindly reminded me of his name. Speaking of Wart, which is the end boss of Super Mario Bros. 2, I still don't know what the first video game I ever truly beat on my own was. It was either Kirby's Adventure or Super Mario Bros. 2, but Wart in particular, he's kind of a complicated fight for a young kid to kind of wrap your head around catch the vegetables without pressing any buttons and then throw them. You had to like get that timing perfect too with the bubbles that Wart shoots out of the mirror. I remember doing it. I played the heck out of Super Mario Brothers 2 for some reason. So I kind of want to say that that was the first game I ever legitimately beat as a kid. But I feel like it might have been Kirby's Adventure because that makes more sense. Don't have the great fairy's blade, so I can't just vertical slice his eye. This is the toughest fight in the entire game. It's not tough, it's just you take a lot of damage the way I just come in here with bombs and spin attacks. Ah, the bubble got in the way. That would have been a perfect shot, too. The bombs can sometimes get a damage if you get the timing right. He just moves around too much. I need hearts already. Actually, yeah, that bomb did it. This is one of those fights that if you're really pushing the time cycle or you're waiting, kind of like the Adolwa thing, how I was like desperate to get that thing over with so I could deposit the sword in time. If this is the fight that you're doing, like seconds away from the next big thing that you need to do, it could really screw you over. All right, here we go. Yes, the spin attack got him. Can I do it again? Holy crap. It's mass chaos. Ah, all right. We're going bow. Ah, too slow. Bad aim. There it is. That's satisfying to do, though. I like those bow shots. I've always liked bows. Never fired one in real life. I think I've held one, at least. Time to see that awesome ice arrow animation again. Oh, it's just small satisfaction going back to that, but I'm just like repeating what I said the last time. That's stupid. That's just enjoyable though. And it also makes me thirsty. 
for iced tea. I was addicted to iced tea and peanut butter and jelly as a kid. Now I'm sick of peanut butter and jelly. I still bring it to work almost every single day because it's the cheapest lunch. You gotta think about it. A loaf of bread a week, that's like a little more than a dollar. If you want it to have softness and some kind of flavor to it. Otherwise you can get like the ones that are less than a dollar and it's like stale and disgusting. And then a jar of peanut butter a month and a jar of jelly a month. It's like the cheapest lunch, except you also want to kill yourself every single day. As it, you smell the flavors of everything else that people cook on their lunch breaks. Unless, of course, you have one of those magic white-collar jobs where you and all the guys go out for like an hour and a half long lunch break at a restaurant every single day. Lucky bastards. Expecting him to jump. Red Lobster, I've been seeing ads for that. They're doing endless shrimp again. I love that. I'm obsessed with seafood. Everything except for clams. Because that's eating boogers. Or loogies. And that's disgusting. Yeah, I've always loved seafood. I remember it took me a long time to finally try shrimp. I was always curious about it. It's weird. It was like the one food I would always stare at, like, is it time? And then I would get scared and not do it for some reason. And then one day I took the plunge and it was delicious. Most people, with seafood I found most people don't like it because of the texture. Because it is like the most textury thing of anything that you could put in your mouth. Yeah, some stuff is a little bit too rubbery and weird. But yeah, shrimp man, like those jumbo shrimp rings. I can eat a whole one of those by myself, no problem. And it's a lot of protein too. But it's troublesome to like seafood in this day and age. To read any good news on the newspaper page. Love and tradition, love a grand design. Some people say it's even harder to find, but then there must be some magic truth <laughs> inside these changing walls. Cause all I see is a tower of dreams, a real life person that I've ever Alright, now, family matters aside, that was the theme song to that show. I got the bunny hood this time, you're going down. Also, I completely lost what I was talking about because, once again, I said words that fit into a song lyric and so my brain instantly switched. Ah, uh, come on, dude, I was purposely trying to avoid you this time. Dope. Shatter and splatter. Sounds like something that would happen after Taco Bell. Oh, I was talking about seafood. Endless shrimp. Oh yeah, how it's um, scary to like seafood because yeah, the ocean is pretty much polluted as crap. And fish are farmed instead of wild caught. And they get all kinds of weird like illnesses and crap in that kind of environment. And so like when you order from a restaurant seafood, even though it tastes great, most restaurants I think get their stuff from like farm-raised fish. And it's way better to get wild caught. But, I don't know, it just kind of makes you wonder and that was really weird. I don't know why things click very audibly like that every now and then. Ah, oh, come on with this stupid dive. I just wanted to jump on the platform. It's getting sloppy. It's sloppier than the last time, which is kind of upsetting. It goes back to the how little things can add up. Yeah, crab legs are fantastic. Just a lot of work for very little meat, though. 
I'm almost always still starving after I have crab legs. I very rarely have them anymore. My dad and I used to always have them. My dad got some kind of, it's like, um, I forget the name of it. He's got some kind of weird medical thing now where he can't even eat all the foods that he is so used to eating, which sucks. It's probably gonna end up happening to me soon, too. It's a scary thought. Just imagine, like, the only thing that makes you happy in most days is, like, the times you can have a really good meal, or one of your favorite meals. It might not even be anything amazing, but it, you just love it, like mac and cheese or something. And imagine something happens to you one day where you can't ever have it again. That sucks. Oh, you bonked. And I missed the dive jump. Sloppiness. You only get so many chances. That's the thing with this temple. You only get so many chances to do these smooth, fluid animations that feel good. And if you botch it up, it's done. And then you have to take that with you, and they say, Honey, how was your day? And you say, I bonked my head again, and I missed the jump like a dope and bonked again. And just, then she gets a divorce, and your whole life sucks. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, man. I'm insane. I think about that sometimes too. I'm still unmarried. I'm probably gonna. All my friends are getting married every time in Dick and Harry. You must be strong if you're to go alone. But, uh. Yeah. It's really just one guy in my main group of high school friends that I've seen recently at weddings. And myself. And I don't think I'm ever gonna get married, man. I just really don't see it happening. So then that kind of sucks, but then at the same time, do I really want that kind of lifestyle? It's that, that's the, what's stressing me out, is, uh, well, not knowing how to make jumps doesn't help either. What is happening with the, mm, my favorite temple and I'm botching it up. Perfect example of though, how the temple is not the culprit, it's your own dumbness that makes this temple not fun. Because otherwise, it's still fantastic. Best temple in the whole game. Fight me! You'll probably win. What was I saying? Something about marriage. Oh yeah, no, the whole... The, like the Andy Griffith show. You know, the whole typic, typical white picket fence, two kids and a dog family, white collar job, salary pay. All these stupid ideals that were planted in our heads, and it's like every single day you fail at it. Other people don't. Other people make it look so easy, but that stuff stresses me out so much. That's why I'm so miserable. That's why I have depression, probably. Anyway. It just makes me wonder, do I really want that kind of life? Would I be happy if I finally got all that crap? Cause I think about that sometimes too. Oh, with the bonking, gyrating. But yeah, I think back to times, like in the moment, there was a lot of times where I was just miserable. But now, looking back at those times where at, in the moment I was miserable, I would do anything to go back because they were better than now. <laughs> like, that's just insane. Like, that's the trend I've noticed. And that could just be what happens when you have something like depression, but it could also just be called being a dumbass. And that's where the stigma comes in, I think. It's hard to decipher the two when there's such a fine line in between them. But it's very hard to enjoy the moment when you're just not feeling it. It really is like it's imagine if you will for lack of a better analogy that you just had a terrible meal and you're about to have explosive diarrhea all over the place and somebody's like well go give this public speech first it'll it's like 45 minutes long and you have to give a 45 minute speech in front of everybody 
while you're about to like crap your pants everywhere and like you really can't hold it back anymore. That's kind of what depression is like. It just kind of creeps up and it's going to take you down no matter what. You can't fight it. You can only fight it for so long and then it just takes over. And it gets in the way of everything you have to do. It interrupts your focus like that. Because imagine trying to give a speech while under your body is like about to crap itself. You have other things on your mind and you can't focus on the sentences. You can't read what's in front of you. It, it just interrupts everything and I missed everything. Oh. Speaking of crapping yourself, man, and this thing is way up there. We might still have this though. Unless you missed the jump! No, this temple, man, I'm botching it up. You know why? Trend with all these Zelda videos that I do. I put the negative energy out there, and that's why everything is going wrong. It's Tony Robbins! Maybe the guy orc fight will be better this time, at least. But I think that is the problem with that mentality of always having to change. That you can't stay the same for more than a day's time. Every day has to be different. Every day is a new day. You have to fill it with new stuff. You have to constantly improve, strive for more. Like, that's such a poisonous way of living. Why do you need more all the time? Why does everything have to be different? Can't you just enjoy the same thing more than once? I don't know. I was going somewhere with that and I forget now. Okay, that was better than last time too. Oh, I know where I was going with it. I was gonna say it should be very easy to live in the moment and just be happy with every little thing that's happening each passing second. But there's that constant, that's the poisonous way of thinking now. Everything has to be different. You have to always be working towards something, striving. And it's insanity. It drives you nuts. It interrupts enjoying the moment because you can't enjoy a moment because it makes you feel bad for enjoying it. Because you should be using that time for something productive. But once again, I don't think most people think this way. I think this is just my own insane brain. <laughs> Alright, well. It's been kind of a sloppy ride, but still, my favorite temple. I love this place. Let's not botch this up. My favorite fairy in the entire game. This guy's my buddy. Shrimp, man, that sounds so good right now. Various kinds, shrimp scampi. And I can't think of any other shrimp at the moment. I actually don't like breaded shrimp. I don't know. Breading always makes me extremely thirsty. And then I have like dry mouth for like nine years, it feels like afterwards, no matter how much water I drink. Because it's just like fried breading, I don't know, nastiness. Fairy, what the heck happened to the fairy? It's stuck behind a pipe. Come back here. I'm wearing your favorite hat. Do I have to swim in the pool? Oh, you're such a dope. He wasn't ready to swim in the deep end. Guy Org. Um. Yeah. Thank God we're almost done. My brain is starting to go insane and I'm not even able to focus. Turn the crank. There we go. Green and blue doesn't get any better than that. My two favorite colors. Hey, what happened to the key noise? It ate it. What? What? There we go. Yes, <laughs> I love that delayed swoosh. Swish noise. Swoosh? How 
how cool would it be to have like an underwater home that you could breathe underwater? If you could just like go hibernate and take a little like personal submarine to like this little hidden hideout of yours. Have some video games down there, some endless shrimp. Be a good time. Gargantuan masked fish. Who's putting the masks on these fish? That's another one. SKS, that sound, that combination of those lettered noises is too much. It's like that age old plural of wasp, the SPS. Try saying wasp with a plural without sounding stupid. This is my first time noticing that each boss theme has a slight difference to it. Like this one has that Jaws theme underlying it. That dun 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 dun. And Adolwa, his starts out kind of like tribally. I knew that was gonna happen. I can't remember what goat sounded like. That'd be so weird if every boss actually does have a slight difference to the same boss theme. That's actually really cool if that is the case, but it could just be my own brain being dumb. We've proven that multiple times. Ah, uh, he's gonna ram it. Alright, there he is. Still a little bit better than last time, though. making the jumps at least except for that one. Oh yeah see beat you to it nice 388 rupees too uh, I want to make the jump one more time I bonked dang it Hundred rupees, that's easy. I mean, if it really came down to it, there's Andrew's room. That's always open on the final day. I don't think I got the hundred rupees in the bomber's hideout yet either, did I? I could do that. Let's hopefully make this jump to the ferry. That would be ideal. It would make up for the slop that I just did. Wait, I always forget, is it this one or the next one? This one's too tall, isn't it? Yeah, that was a definite bonk. I think you can make this one, though. You can make that. I need to make it. Yes, okay. I think the last video I recorded, I failed that so many times, and I had to go around the legitimate way. It really bugged me. But I'm pretty sure this one you could somehow reach, too, if you time it perfectly. But that's it! We're cashing in the fairies, getting the double defense. All that's left is Stone Tower. Well, all that's left this cycle, then, is to go get our long-awaited reward of the All-Night Mask. Which is the key component to doing this in three cycles. Successfully getting that your first cycle. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure this is the only great fairy Link waves goodbye to. Alright, let's go get our mask. Hi. I'm all ready for next cycle too, powder keg. That's good stuff. Not a bad first cycle, I must say. So next time, cycle two, we will start with the ranch. It's all ranch, Andrew Caffey, Stone Tower, and whatever else we can get done. And 
And it'll just be the mayor and the other recipient of the priority mail, really. And probably Grandma's Long Story. I don't think we could do Grandma's Long Story until Cycle 3. We can start ni next cycle with her early story, though. Anyway, we'll see when we get there. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you later.